In this video, I'm going to discuss answers and provide some explanations for the worksheet that you just completed on universal gravitation. If you need a copy of the worksheet, I'll post a link in the video description below. All the problems on this worksheet are getting you guys to practice using Newton's law of universal gravitation, which tells us the size of the gravitational attraction between any two objects with mass, right? It's the universal gravitation constant, big G, times the mass of the first object, times the mass of the second object that are attracting one another, divided by R, and R is the, the distance between the center of these two masses. So the first couple problems are getting you to think about the, gra the gravitational force of attraction between the Earth and a person either standing on the Earth's surface, standing at uh, the elevation of Everest, or orbiting the Earth in the International Space Station. So number one was getting you guys to think through how we've calculated the size of the gravitational force for a person standing on the Earth's surface in the past, before we knew Newton's universal gravitation equation. We just multiplied their mass, if we had a 100 kilogram person, times the gravitational field strength at the Earth's surface, which is approximately 10 newtons for each kilogram, or more precisely, about 9.8 newtons for each kilogram. So a 100 kilogram person would feel a gravitational force of attraction of about 980 newtons. Well, we can solve for the same gravitational attraction also now using Newton's universal law of gravitation. We just plug in the mass of the Earth, that's m1, times the mass of the person, so 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, times 100 kilograms, divided by the distance those two things are separated. So the center of the Earth to the center of the person is essentially just the radius of the Earth. Right? There's a little bit of extra distance from their feet to their essentially their belly button, but that doesn't add a whole lot. So what we plug in for R for number two is just the radius of the Earth, 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. And remember, that's R squared in the denominator, so we've got to square that. And if we plug those values in, you should get a force of about 981.3 newtons. That's at sea level. Well, in number three, you're figuring out, well, how big is that attraction when that person is now standing a little bit farther away from the Earth at the elevation of Everest? So the only thing that changes in the equation, the masses are still the same, but they're now separated a farther distance. The distance between the center of the person and the center of mass of the Earth is now the radius of the Earth plus the elevation of Everest. So in for R, we need to plug 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters plus 8,848 meters, the elevation of Everest approximately from sea level, and then we have to square those values. And if you do that, you'll get a force of about 978.6 newtons, which you can see is a little bit smaller than standing at sea level. So when you're farther away from the Earth's surface, it's going to attract you, and you're going to attract it with a little bit less force. When we go all the way out to the International Space Station elevation, now the separation distance is the Earth's radius plus 300,000 meters. That's the approximate elevation of the International Space Station from the Earth's surface. So for R, this value right here is the Earth's radius plus the orbital altitude of the International Space Station. So that's about 6.67 times 10 to the 6 meters. And we find out that the gravitational force on a 100 kilogram person even at 300,000 meters above the Earth's surface, orbiting in the International Space Station is still 895.1 newtons. That's basically about 91% of their weight compared to sea level. So in the International Space Station, you still have a lot of weight, uh, about 91% or 91 of your normal weight. I guess the question is, why are people... Why do people feel or appear weightless inside the International Space Station, even though they feel 91% of their weight? That's a conversation that we're going to have later in class. If you take that same 100 kilogram person and we place them on the moon, the question is, well, how heavy are they on the moon? What is their weight on the moon? Looking at Newton's universal law of gravitation, this works for the Earth, this works for the moon, this works for any two objects with mass. So. When standing on the moon, uh, you have the mass of the moon, the mass of the person, divided by the distance those two things are separated. So that's going to approximately be just the radius of the moon. When you plug those values in, you get that the person's weight 
a 100 kilogram person would feel a weight of 161.9 newtons when standing on the moon's surface. For question six, you are coming up with an expression to calculate the size of the acceleration of a person that's near the Earth's surface, right? So we zoomed in right there. Uh, they feel a gravitational force, and which means they're going to be accelerating towards the Earth. Well, the acceleration of any object is equal to the sum of the forces on it divided by its mass. And how big is the sum of the forces on this person? Well, it's just equal to the gravitational attraction that the Earth has on this person near its surface. And we can use Newton's law of universal gravitation as an expression to tell us how big that force would be, right? Mass of the Earth times the mass of the person divided by the radius of the Earth squared. That's how far their center masses are approximately from one another, as long as a person is close to the Earth's surface, all times that universal gravitation constant. And when we plug that in for the numerator, that's the sum of the forces, we've got to divide by the mass of the person, and you can see that the mass of the person ends up canceling out. We know that the acceleration of an object near the Earth's surface doesn't depend on the object's mass. And when we look at this expression, there is no mass of the object in there because it cancels out. So the acceleration is equal to big G times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth squared. If we use that expression and plug in the values from page one for the mass of the Earth, the universal gravitation constant and the radius of the Earth, we end up getting that this expression gives us a value of 9.81 meters per second per second. And this, we know that this is what the acceleration of gravity is. Newton's law of universal gravitation paired with Newton's second law of motion can predict that just using the values of the known mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth. If we use that same expression, to have us predict what the size of the acceleration is for something on the moon, instead of the mass of the Earth, we just use the mass of the moon, 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. And instead of the Earth's radius, we plug in the moon's radius, and that predicts that the acceleration of any object, regardless of its mass, near the moon's surface would be about 1.62 meters per second per second. And remember, a meter per second per second, or units for acceleration, are the same as units for gravitational field strength. So this not only tells us what the uh, expected acceleration would be near the moon's surface of any object, it also tells us the moon's gravitational field strength near its surface. For number 9, 10, and 11, these were proportional reasoning questions. And so number 9 said, define an expression for the size of the gravitational force experienced by a person of mass mp standing on the surface of the earth with mass me. We're just finding a symbolic expression for that. So we, it's just plugging in the given variables in Newton's law of universal gravitation. So big G times the mass of the earth times the mass of the person divided by the radius of the earth squared. And number 10 says, if we now take this person that was standing at the earth's surface, one earth radius away, and we place them now two earth radii away, the question is, how does that affect the size of the gravitational force that they experience? Well, the only thing that's changing in our expression, it's not the masses, it's the distance that those two masses are apart. That person, the center of their mass and the center of the Earth are now two Earth radii away. And so we've got two times the Earth's radius that we're squaring in the denominator. And if we square something in a parentheses, we have to square the value and the, the variable. So it's two squared times re squared. And if we kind of pull that, that divided by four out kind of as a coefficient, we get that the size of the gravitational force is one fourth times big G times the mass of the earth times the mass of the person divided by the radius of the earth squared. And remember this expression right here was the original gravitational force when they were standing on the earth's surface. And so all the way out here, because you're doubling the radius, the gravitational attraction that the Earth has on this person would be one-fourth what it would be when they're standing on the Earth's surface, right? The gravitational force of attraction is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. You double that distance because that distance is squared, uh, that force goes down by a factor of four times. In number 11, we're thinking through what happens if you change more than one thing, right? What if that person is now three times farther away. They're at 
three Earth radii away from the center of the Earth. They're even farther out in space. And let's say that person has twice the mass. How does the gravitational attraction on them compare to the gravitational attraction from this person with one M standing at one Earth's radius away on its surface? Well, if we take our expression here, we're doubling the mass of the person, so we put two times MP. We're tripling the radius, so it's three times the radius of the Earth. And all we need to do is kind of like pull out these coefficients. So we've got a two on the top, and we have a three squared on the bottom. So uh, that coefficient is two ninths. So when we simplify this, we get two ninths times big G times ME times MP divided by the radius of the Earth squared. And so this person all the way out here is going to feel a gravitational force that's two ninths the size as the person who's standing on the Earth's surface.